New Heisel, CBS Sports College football analyst, of course, former college coach. All right, let's start with Ohio State. Uh, what's going on with the COVID test here? Well, as all great reporters do, now that I'm on your side of the tracks and the media, mm -hmm. I'm just probing. I'm just, uh, you know, trying to get uh, inside information. A friend of mine out in California who's very close to the program gave me that information, didn't give me a name. So I was asking Rick Pizzo yesterday on uh, Sirius XM uh, who it was. He did not uh, give me any names either, but uh, did not say that it was a false rumor. So we'll wait and see. The bigger question, not so much for the Northwestern game, is will it be a Big Ten rule that is a 20 day, 21 day quarantine, mm. which would, of course, then keep him out of a New Year's Day game? should this have happened over the course of this week. So that that's uh, what we're trying to divulge. We're not armchair quarterbacks. We're armchair ophthalmologists this weekend with the eye test here. So can, oh my. A, can Ohio State win but hurt their chances by barely beating Northwestern? Like, is there a scenario where Ohio State could win and not stay in the Final Four? I don't believe so. Okay. I think uh, they're the darlings. Uh, they have, I mean, they were, they were number two in the country without even having played, right? Even when, before the games were done, just when the announcement came back that the Big Ten was going to be uh, in the fray starting in late October, Ohio State started getting into the rankings without even having played a game. So I, I think the Buckeyes are a lock uh, short of losing to Northwestern. If you were on the committee, and I just said to you privately, what is your philosophy? Could you look at this and go, look, we want the four best matchups. We want TV ratings. We want, you know, powerhouses in here. And whatever way it is, however we do this, this is what we want to do. Like, do you, could that be the philosophy of the playoff committee without them ever telling us that? From outside looking in, it looks as if it is. Yeah. Uh, given the brand recognition. Now, having known a lot of people on that committee uh, and, you know, not questioning their integrity in any way, shape or form. Uh, the problem with the committee's directive is they are asked to give us the four best teams. And all of us growing up realize that we want the four most deserving teams, meaning that you've wanted on the field of play. You can't ignore that. You know, let's let's just lose use Louisiana. They went to Iowa State and beat them by 17 points. And here they are 12 spots behind with one loss while Iowa State is up there with two losses. Now, we can all say that on another day and given the improvement that we've seen with Iowa State, we would probably pick Iowa State to beat Louisiana if they played again. But the bottom line is we saw the game and the game told us another thing. So Ultimately, we've got a group of five that's being locked out of this college football playoff, and we've got some uh, brands, you know, a la the New York Yankees, that the television people are just in love with and want to see continue to play. I've been railing on this the last couple of days, and I'm sure this audience is tired of hearing me talk about this. So what is equitable for, for the schools? Like Cincinnati will never play in the Final Four. Coastal Carolina, BYU, you can run down these schools. They're, they're not going to be in there. They're, they're never going to allow them because they wouldn't be good for TV ratings. So what is, what is the solution that makes sense for all involved here? Well, I think there's a tweak that has to be done in the regular season. So the committee has more data uh, to make determinations. Obviously, that was not possible this year with COVID. Uh, but I think we need to see more crossover games, more home and home games. And, you know, as looking at the schedules as they start to exist five, 10 years down the road, I think we're going to get more of that. But I, I think that's one piece of it. And then the other piece is that I think we have to go to eight and maybe sacrifice the, uh, the uh, conference championship games. Uh, because those games, I those, mean, we're going to watch money Notre grabs. That, that's those are money that grabs. Is. Yeah, those, those are money grabs. And I love what happened in the ACC as a one-off this year. Notre Dame's inclusion was a great thing, but the, the 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 way they went to one league rather than split divisions, the coastal has never actually gotten to the to the finish line. Right? It's always been the Atlantic. I like one league 
get rid of the conference playoff games, and then we can maybe take that weekend and create an eight-team playoff, which always has a group of five representative, which will give more inclusion to the Cincinnati's of the world. And while it's, it's a long shot that they're going to do well and win it, I think we all love Cinderella. Notre Dame stay in the ACC after they this? Should. Yeah. They should. They uh, should. It'll be an interesting question uh, how they would – go about keeping some of those relationships like with USC and Stanford and such uh, and a Big Ten rival, but but they should. This has uh, been a huge success for them. I don't know what the dollars and cents mean, Dan, in terms of their NBC deal. It's all in the pot right now, but uh, this for Notre Dame football is a huge uh, uh, boon in my mind. I checked with my uh, college football source and I said, you know, Notre Dame loses – how much can they lose by and then drop out of the final four? And my source said, if uh, it's an A&M loss to Alabama margin, that was 52 to 24. Could you see a scenario where Clemson blows out Notre Dame? Any chance that Notre Dame falls out of the top four? It would have to be a significant blowout. Uh, I don't know that it has to be the Ohio State Wisconsin blowout 59 nothing that we saw in 2014, but it would have to be a significant blowout. And given the way Notre Dame has played defensively, I can't imagine that happening. Uh, I, I, I think short of anything just monumental, uh, the Irish are in. What else intrigues you about this weekend that we should keep an eye on? Oh, I think, uh, you know, the Florida game, you know, the fact that Florida only fell one spot. Uh, why is that? A loss. Why, why is that? Shocking. Shocking. But why, I think they were Rick? Just, I mean, I, well, it's, they, they're trying to keep them ahead of Georgia. They beat Georgia. But then the question is, why is Georgia there, right? Two losses. There are teams, like you mentioned, USC before we came back from the break. Now, listen, the Trojans have, in terms of game control, it's their own fault. They have not looked dominant. It's, I can understand where the committee's coming from. But that's a brand that's won 11 national championships. That's a brand that's sitting there, uh, you know, it would move the needle in terms of television sets. And yet they're getting absolutely no consideration. But if the, the brand had competed for a national title in the last three or four years, I think USC would get far more love and they would be higher in the rankings because Agreed. we would go, hey, you know what? Last year they went to the Final Four or the previous year, whatever it is. USC has not been relevant in a while, and that's why they don't get the benefit of uh, the eye test. Nor has the Pac-12. This is good. They have been to the college football playoff two years in seven tries, and that uh, is just where it sits. But that's why we have to expand the playoff, because that will tip the scales back a little bit more evenly for recruiting purposes. It won't change that Clemson, Ohio State, and Alabama are still winning the titles, but it will change where all those recruits are going if there are more spots to fill to get to the, uh, to get to the promised land of the college football playoff. Is Auburn a good job? Auburn is a great job from a money standpoint. <laughs> I mean, holy well, smokes. Well, just ask uh, Gus Malzahn. <laughs> Gus is going to get 10.8 here in the next 20 days. You know, uh, that's, that's a good deal and, and have 10 more, eight, 10, eight more coming. Why not uh, keep him? Like if I'm oh, going to, if I have to pay crazy. you that kind of money, I, I'm going to keep you. It's, I mean, it's, it's like crazy. a divorce, you know, is it, is it, is it cheaper to just you, stay married? You live on that side of the house. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This makes no sense. Uh, the only guy out there that I believe would make sense is Hugh Freeze. And obviously they're a little bit concerned, you know, that I guess the, the, the people inside the program are worried he might bring more, uh, review from the NCAA mm, and such, but heck mm. they hired Bruce Pearl. They yeah. hired Bruce Pearl. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was an NCAA purgatory and they hired him and it worked out. They went to a final four to me, Hugh freeze is the answer because both Gus Malzahn and Nick Saban tried to hire Hugh freeze to be their coordinator. They know what kind of coach he is. Usually when the NCAA is looking at you, you've done well. They just question why you've done well. So maybe that would be a, a positive for, for Auburn. Amen. And I, I think it's also a story this year as to where is the NCAA? I, I've not seen them uh, be part of this. They didn't have much in the way of answers for eligibility. They didn't have much in the way of answers for uh, what should be the protocol. They left everything up to the individual conferences and commissioners. And uh, it's been a it's been a very weird year for that entity in Indianapolis. No, they're Kaiser Sose. We don't know. <laughs> 
who they are. That's perfect. Like, like we, that is perfect. We have no idea. We know they're there, but we don't know what they look like. Um, I saw this. I don't know if it was a report, to be fair to it. Urban Meyer, UCLA? Did no you, way. Well, I, no I, way. I thought of all people, <laughs> knowing no what way. you went through. <laughs> no way. And their lack of commitment to their football program. Urban would would not do well at UCLA. Well, I, I can't they do imagine. Now, they do now have a Buckeye as their athletic director. Oh, I know. Martin, that. Martin Jarman is there, and they just uh, signed a huge deal that people aren't realizing is a huge deal with that Jordan brand, the Nike thing that's going now at UCLA. Got out from Under Armour yeah. and now have the uh, the Nike brand uh, and, and the Jordan brand along with it. So that is a monster deal for UCLA, but Urban, no way. I think Urban is either done, comfortable with Fox, or... If uh, Brian Kelly takes an NFL job, that would be where he would go. Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Well, he passed on Notre Dame a yep. long, long and time I, ago. And, and I think he wants a do-over. That's just my gut. I haven't talked to Urban. I don't know, but uh, I'm throwing that out there just because I think it's sexy. Wow. I like that one better than the UCLA <laughs> rumor. <laughs> uh, before I let you go, we're talking to Rick Neuheisel, CBS College Football Analyst. Uh, you normally provide us with a song whenever you're on. Oh, yes, on. I do. I don't know. Oh, yes, the I holiday do. Oh, you got the guitar? The axe is nearby. Oh, okay. It's just a little something, you know. Okay, what's the topic? Well, it's Christmas. Oh, okay. And we're trying to marry it a little bit with uh, what's going on in college football. Okay, here we go. Here's uh, Rick Neuheisel. You know, Mick Lovin' and Polly and Seton and Fritzy. All of the others are out getting blitzied. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the COVID reindeer wasn't feeling quite himself. And when the doctor saw him, asked if he'd been near the elves, <laughs> all of the other reindeer now were being contact traced. If they had been with Rudolph in the quarantine, they'd be placed. Santa, of course, was quite concerned. Christmas might be a bust. So he asked the CFP, that committee of 13 learned individuals, to get opinions he could trust. Santa now felt much better. Losing Christmas isn't really a shame. Heck, he could still be Santa without even playing a game. <laughs> Uh, it's not quite born in the SEC, <laughs> which wait, wait. It's just pointing out that you still, the, the great brands are still the great brands. They are. That's all. That's it. They, they are. Uh, Who's got a better brand than Santa? Now, and by the way, by the way, your set is off. Awesome. That ch chestnuts uh, roasting on the open fire behind you. Is that Bobby Knight roasting on the open fire behind you? Uh, Bobby Knight's behind me. This yes. is the Lou Holtz doll. That was at but, Arkansas. You need to get the uh, Medal of Freedom on on there for Lou. I I think they went on probation soon after that was. Uh, <laughs> that, that was done. What? What a nice thing! Uh, oh, what a nice thing! Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us as always. It's great talk to always you. Always a pleasure. Happy holidays you to too. one and all. Yeah, and uh, let's finish the season. Congratulations to everybody who got a college season in. This has uh, been phenomenal to enjoy. He's Rick Neuheisel, CBS Sports College football analyst.